After the peepers had adjusted themselves, Jenna looked around for Henry. She found him rolling on the back veranda, biting the edge of a rolled-up rug and contorting his body excitedly. Drenched with mud from carousing in the sudden rainstorm, he presented a matted, muddy countenance. Jenny couldn't help but chuckle. You needn't think of coming in here dressed like that, young man, she chastised as the pup leaped at the tattered screen door. Jenny smiled grimly. Well, this will have to be fixed right now. Luckily, the sprinkles had stopped and the clouds began parting to allow a few sultry sunbeams to break through to earth. Jenny slipped out of her dingy cotton dress and pressed on her old faded coveralls. She slipped a cotton undershirt over her head and bounced out the door to the ecstatic accompaniment of her canine companion. First, she pumped a tub full of water from the well into a large metal tub, adding a judicious sprinkling of carbolic soap. Henry, mutely protesting, stood shivering in disgust in the tub. Jenny knelt scrubbing, pausing only occasionally to search out a few escaping fleas that had been driven to the surface in the deluge. She was deeply absorbed in this task when her three compatriots from across the river discovered her. Looking very spick and span, Dewey and Rady bounced merrily in an ox cart, while Liz had apparently been shanghaied in produce baskets stowed behind them. Fresh produce, fresh produce, announced a jocular Dewey. Care for a radish or some early peas, ma'am, he inquired. Lord, no, not from the likes of poor white trash like you, she caustically attacked. Why are you fine young ladies encumbered by the presence of this scoundrel? Jumping off the bench and scrambling for the porch, the two girls giggled in reply. We were waiting for the train, which everyone said would be coming through any day now, but decided under the threat of foul weather it might behoove us to accept his generosity. Apparently he had been instructed to retrieve the plantings for the churchyard from Mrs. Cantrell. Besides, he's so scrawny and backwards, he couldn't cause anyone any harm, do you think? Yes, Jenny contemplated the young buck's countenance, but he's sort of cute in an ugly sort of way. You'd best watch yourself. Blushed faced, more from embarrassment than anger, Dewey retorted, been a long time since any of you ladies has been in front of a mirror, ain't it? Might not be so particular if one had a better grasp of the true facts of the situation. Laughing, Jenny slapped a restraining hand on Henry's neck as he made a frank, frantic effort to bound from the tub. Don't take too kindly to washing, does he? Dewey commented with a sympathetic look for the dog. What kind of dog is he, anyway? Just a puppy dog. If he don't so much like to bath, do you think you ought to wash him? Liz asked earnestly. Jenny, scrubbing and smoothing the young animal, her tanned arms covered in soap suds, smiled over Lizzie's shimmering blonde hair at Rady. Jenny thought under her breath, my, how crisp and cool she looks in that shady hat and flowered violet dress. Oh, I guess you mean, not pausing for a reply, Liz continued. Where's all that twittin' noise coming from? Oh, I guess you mean my chickens. I took them into the kitchen because they got all wet in the rain shower and their mother is a pea-headed nitwit. Don't know more than the man in the moon about raising babies, she added. Go have a look if you like, noting the child's eager stare. See if they're dry yet, Dewey, she instructed. The three visitors trooped into the kitchen as Jenny finished up her yard chore. 
After many loud, excited, and admiring comments from the girls, the party emerged, enchanted by the timorous wonder of nature. Dewey reported that all the chicks were fine and fluffy. You'll have to excuse the mess in the kitchen with all the excitement. I haven't had time to clear things up yet this morning. Papa had a bad night last night and got up late. Was he ill? Rady asked. Yes, he's been a bit on the down. He's been a bit run down lately. The heat this time of year always brings on a bout of the malaria he picked up in the war. Down in Cuba, you know. Moving to change the subject, she rinsed Hendry with the thoroughness at the well, working the pump as the trio surrounded her. She thought of her mother, who would have cringed at the thought of anyone parading through the house without knowing it was spotlessly immaculate. Let Rady think what she wants, Jenny reflected. If any work gets done around here, they must know I'm the one to do it. She was inwardly thankful that the trio decided to continue their trek home with the vegetables and plantings. Her loose brown hair was curling from the exposure of the growing heat of the day and was flopping to one side as usual. Her rosy brown face was flushed. She was definitely in a mood to be left alone and certainly didn't wish to be so prominently compared to the gracious competition. Jenny will be back this afternoon. I promised to show them the gold mine, and I thought we'd walk up there later. Sounds like fun, Jenny replied, rolling her blue eyes in humorous assent, and with a soapy hand, waved goodbye to her friends. Go, go, good countrymen, she quoted while waving energetically. Gold mine indeed, she pondered. What a creepy old dump. But who knows what sort of adventure we might cook up. She finished drying Henry, who complicated matters by wriggling and licking spasmodically. Tying him on a short leash, leash to the porch railing, she slapped him lightly for playfully nipping on her hand a bit too hard. Turning from the bright sunshine, she passed through the, creek, through the creaky screen door, determined to attack her morning housework.